Danger Doll, this film has had a bit of a rocky history. It was announced back in 2006 in a collaboration between Legendary and Blizzard, then you get no news for three years, and then out of nowhere, Sam Raimi, who did the Spider-Man films, is announced as the director, with Robert Rodat penning the screenplay. One year later, 2010, it's announced the script is finished. Two years after that, Sam Raimi leaves the project and according to reports, this is because Blizzard made an initial script, but Sam and Robert didn't think it would work, so they busted out their own script and got it approved by Legendary. Blizzard, naturally, got ticked off by this, so they vetoed the new script, thereby forcing Sam and Robert to move on. Not in bad terms, mind you, just it would take too long for both parties to see eye to eye, so they called it. Now, outside of YouTube, I consider myself a little bit of a film buff. I do research on the writers and the directors of a film before I go see it, and in this case, I'm no different. I knew based on Man of Steel's choice of director Zack Snyder, who directed Watchmen 300 and yes, even Sucker Punch, which proves Snyder is an awful writer, but still an amazing director. The Man of Steel, it would be an exceptionally nice looking film, right? But based on David S. Goyer's history, his previous screenplays, his story, dialogue and characters, they would be paper thin, generic, all style, no substance, flashy bang bangs. Likewise, I predict that Star Wars Episode 7 will be the movie of the year because of J.J. Abrams' visual work on Star Trek, but more importantly, Michael Arndt's previous work on Little Miss Sunshine, Toy Story 3, and yes, even Oblivion, which was given a mediocre score for seemingly no reason. If you haven't seen that already, go see that movie now. It's because unlike Goya, Michael Arndt can write characters. He can write captivating dialogue, and he has a unique style of writing that is only his which rivals that of a considerably less violent Tarantino. I wouldn't want Aunt penning the Warcraft screenplay since I believe others are more suited to the job, but Star Wars? Absolutely. Couldn't think of anyone better. I'm going to leave the comment section in this video for the Warcraft movie discussion on story possibilities and structure, but for now I'd like to discuss the film's writer Charles Leavitt and director Duncan Jones, because these are the men who will dictate whether the WoW movie will break the video game adaptation curse or continue it. So Duncan Jones, the director, he's done two major films, one of which he co-wrote titled Moon, and the other based on an existing screenplay with his creative input source code, both in the sci-fi genre. Moon was released in 2009, one of my favourite movies of all time. It was a one-actor deal starring Sam Rockwell on a space station dealing with clones. More of a psychological drama than a sci-fi with a budget close to Tarantino's Reservoir Dogs. Small sets, more focus on dialogue and tension than cinematic flashiness. It shows Duncan can take a low-budget screenplay and churn out the same quality experience you'd find in any powerhouse film. And I quote from his interviews, I want to prove myself in smaller films before producers can risk high funding and creative freedom in both my writing and directing. His second movie, Source Code, which is based on a screenplay by Ben Ripley, equally as good. The only comment I'll make on the script itself is that Duncan took out a lot of the exposition, turning an overcomplicated premise into an accessible, well-paced action slash psychological drama film. And he also injected a bit of humour into the script, since he likens it to Hitchcock giving his own films a lighter tone to contrast and emphasise the dark moments. But what does this mean for the Warcraft movie? Well, based on his previous work, all the press interviews I've watched, as well as his written biographies which detail his childhood as David Bowie's son, his degree in philosophy, experience at film school, apprenticeship with Tony Scott, and work in the advertisement industry, there's a few facts we can gather. One, and this is important, if he doesn't think a script works, he's not afraid to make or suggest some changes. Two, he's fairly flexible in his directing style, as in, he lets the people he's hired do what they do best, like actors and visual effect designers, only stepping in if he disagrees about the direction it's taking. So if Chris Metzen comes to him with an amazing story idea, there's a good chance Duncan would take it on board and try to make it work in the film, but only if he really believes it'll benefit the movie, unlike a director like Pierre Delan who controls every aspect of production and makes the cast feel incredibly uncomfortable. Three, even though most of his experience has been in sci-fi films, he still loves fantasy RPGs like Dungeons and Dragons and that he, like any typical gamer, spends all his free time playing games, even staying up all night to do so. 
Whether or not he's on the same level as Henry Cavill, raiding so much he almost missed the call to tell him he'd landed the role of Superman, that remains to be seen. Four, he loves humour in his scripts, not laugh out loud, roll on the floor humour, but lighter tones, something which WoW embodies in a large number of ways. The only concerns I have are small, since this is such a big budget all or nothing endeavour, Duncan's only experience has been in 5 million and 32 million dollar productions. With the numbers and expectations people are throwing around, a 100 million dollar epic film series surpassing that set by Lord of the Rings. I do hope Duncan won't bow down to your typical Michael Bay explosion nonsense, and that he'll still have the same input in the scripts he had during the lower budget ones. My other concern is style, twofold. Blizzard's art style is very recognisable, unique, and people are accustomed to it. Using live action actors and life size locations will somewhat remove this aspect, and CGI locations that resemble WoW will look totally out of place with flesh and bone regular sized human beings. Likewise, though I love Duncan's type of directing and I think it works for a sci-fi mainstream audience, he's yet to establish his own style, his own flavour like that of Tarantino, Stanley Kubrick, the Coen brothers or even Zack Snyder. A lot of his camera angle choices and location design are textbook perfect. But think about the characters in 300 or Watchmen or Pulp Fiction, the soldiers in Full Metal Jacket. All of them are instantly recognisable because they're uniquely iconic. Maybe I'm just nitpicking here, I just would have felt more comfortable, slightly more comfortable, if Duncan had worked on one or two more films before tackling what is arguably one of the most important video game adaptations of all time. Although I do think he'll do a damn fine job regardless, so... On the other hand, Charles Leavitt as the film's primary writer, that worries me to a certain extent. When you have a look at his track record, it seems positive. Like, he's been involved in Blood Diamond and K Pax, both relatively successful films and ones I've certainly enjoyed, but they've always been co written or rewritten screenplays. For instance, Blood Diamond, a script he wrote himself in which he immersed himself in research for the diamond and African smuggling industry, it was actually rewritten by Ed Zwick and Marshall Herskovitz prior to production, which isn't information you'll find on IMDB or the official Wikipedia page. Now K-Pax, it was based on existing material from writer Gene Brewer. It was co-written with Gene. Seventh Son, which is going to be released early 2014, is a film very loosely based on the children's fantasy novel series The Wardstone Chronicles, and judging by the movie trailer, it's going to flop hard. So this film is once again co-written with two others on board. In fact, the only script Charles has worked on by himself was 1996 Sun Chaser, which has been quoted as having a predictable and often laughable script, with stereotypical characters and a story that lacks direction, attempting to handle too many plot threads at the same time. This is possibly the worst thing you'd ever want to hear about a screenplay, especially Warcraft, which is reliant on multiple plots and distinctive characters. To be fair though, that film came out 17 years ago and I'm sure Charles has improved considerably within that span of time. Now like with Duncan Jones, what does this mean for the Warcraft script? Well from what I've seen in Blood Diamond, Charles' latest film, his characters are simplistic one goal people that make inconsistent moral choices, ones that stretch your sense of disbelief to breaking point. For instance, one character is obsessed with diamonds and money throughout the whole film, right? but then he heroically sacrifices himself for no reason at the end. Even when he's risking his life to help a man find his son towards the end of the film, they are fighting and bickering like they're enemies as if there's been no character development at all. Even worse is if I finish watching a film and I feel like I've, what, I've seen it 10 times before then. That tells me it followed the hero's journey, the hero with a thousand faces, that formulaic nonsense you find in children's movies which is lifted from Star Wars because that's the pedestal everyone's trying to reach for. So I absolutely do not want to see the same thing happen with this movie. For Warcraft to work as a film, one built for the general population not just video game fans, it needs to be loyal to the existing lore but not chained by it. It needs to find the story people can relate to and then explore that. It needs to avoid plotline tropes like the Star Wars formula. It must focus on the singular plot and tone, not throw in as many races, locations, and characters as it can, otherwise you'll end up with an X-Men film. Basically, its debut needs to show it doesn't need to rely on any of the Warcraft games. 
Just make a movie people will like, even if they don't know what Warcraft is, but don't shit all over the franchise by making a Mario Brothers type film. It's like Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings or The Hobbit. They are loyal to the visual style of the books, but they don't mind stretching the lore or inventing characters in order to give the movie a much needed heartbeat. If the first Hobbit movie didn't create the pale orc, the dramatic final act would have been an attack by a random bunch of wargs, but instead the pale orc is used to strengthen the bond between Bilbo and Thorin, as well as provide a big epic end battle. So visually, I think Duncan Jones is going to do a fantastic job. Script-wise, I am skeptical, but cautiously optimistic. As long as Duncan can make changes to the screenplay and the staff at Blizzard, including Chris Metzen, are involved, then I think we're fine with the tone, the humour, and the lore consistency. If this film will indeed come out, keep your eyes peeled for the full-length trailer. There will be a very accurate representation of what to expect. If each line of dialogue sounds cliche or generic on the level of Man of Steel, then abandon all hope. But until then, just pray Charles Lievit can pull off a video game adapted miracle. And now we turn to some community comments, starting with, as usual, Super Fry. I reckon that the new WoW movie will be live action mixed with computer special effects. The story begins with a zombie Garona, who's come back from the dead to eat Murloc brains and poison Thrall because he neglected to pay child support. Only a goblin bearing a strange resemblance to MacGyver can fix it. Deathwing's jaw comes back to life in Stormwind and starts eating the orphans. Seeing how Deathwing lacks a digestive system no one bothers, the movie is now solely about the Horde. I think all things considered, it's a pretty fine story idea, but I'm not sure Thrall would neglect his child support. He's a good guy, he does good things. Maybe we could have a spin-off film where Thrall, down in his luck, has to sell illegal charms of good fortune on the street so he can pay her a ransom for his kids, maybe give him a goblin sidekick and make it a buddy cop movie, soundtrack by Vanilla Ice. But on the topic of live action mixed with CGI, maybe on the level of 300 or Beowulf, I have to wonder if it is worth the effort. The WoW cinematics show that Blizzard Studio can pump out realistic representations of in-game characters, and if so, why don't they just make a movie based on these? Well, you have to realize that movies and cinematics are two different concepts. These cinematics, they mostly employ cardboard cutout 2.5D background graphics that a camera can only shoot from one specific direction. If you take a close look at the Burning Crusade cinematic, you'll notice a lot of the backgrounds look picture perfect, like they've been painted. That's because they're matte paintings with 3D molds in front of them. In a movie, you can't do this, maybe in one or two brief dialogue scenes, but when the audience sees the same background for an extended period of time from one very specific angle, it gets noticeable. If Blizzard Cinematic Department were to construct these backgrounds into complete, detailed, fleshed out 3D models, ones which they'd be able to position cameras over at all angles, you'd be looking at upwards of 5 years production time. But if you can shoot a real world location like Peter Jackson did for Lord of the Rings, maybe build a few sets and flesh out the rest via graphics, you'd save a considerable amount of time and money. When you think about a Pixar film that is all 3D modeling, it's not like those models are painstakingly detailed like the WoW cinematics are. They're suitably plain because it speeds up production, just like the Wii U doesn't need expensive equipment to run stylized games. So the question is, do you want a movie with real actors somewhat enhanced by graphics on the level of Lord of the Rings, or an animation resembling that of Pixar for adults? Now, a comment from Alex Zacharias. I'd like to see the Arthur story from Warcraft 3, Reign of Chaos. It seems like the most translatable to a movie out of anything in the universe. Apart from being a great story, its emphasis on human emotions slash ideas mixed with the zombie-like scourge and orc adversaries will make it very approachable for anyone who isn't familiar to Warcraft. So let's talk story. I feel it's inevitable that if this movie is successful, we'll be looking at a series, just like Marvel uniting their products under one banner, or Star Wars set in film trilogies. If done right, Warcraft could be the next big thing. It's very tempting to base the movie on Arthur since, as you mentioned, it's both a compelling and accessible character arc, culminating in the fight with Illidan and the victory at the Frozen Throne. But I want to make it clear, you can't do this now. It'd be like creating the Avengers before you see the characters in other films. You have to establish them prior to the big events. 
I want to know about Medivh, Nezul, the Burning Legion, Kael'thas, and Illidan well before we talk about blowing our load on an Arthur screenplay. Hell, we need to see Draenor and the Orcs first invasion into Azeroth. Orcs and their backstory need to be established before we even get a hint at the Undead Plague, Sylvanas, and Quel'Thalas. The first film needs to be like the vanilla WoW launch, a testing ground, the framework for future movies. Don't throw all your golden eggs in the pan and wait for the world's greatest omelette. Put in one and watch how it sizzles. What I want in the movie is a simple story and black and white characters. In that, I mean orcs and humans. Complexity, more races, and narrative depth come later. But for now, all we want is an interesting standalone template. It needs to be impressive enough that people demand more movies, but not so plain that people wonder why they should bother. You've got Blackrock Orcs, Wizards, and the Soldiers of Lordaeron. You've got a city like Stormwind under threat by the Blackrock Clan, and Orcs like Thrall in internment camps studying the basics of shamanism. Don't show a bajillion different races and a million characters to the point where nobody can follow the story. Show two races, give them depth, and above all, focus on the tone and storyline. The first war is perfect for this. According to rumors, the film's protagonist will be Khadgar the Wizard, Medivh his apprentice, and Anduin Lothar, knight champion in the Kingdom of Azeroth. Just like Anakin and Obi-Wan in the original Star Wars trilogy, it'll chronicle the fall of an apprentice and through the fault of Medivh, the rise of a new enemy, the Orcs. It's a storyline that basically begs to be adapted into a film since it introduces the audience into a fantasy world, remains grounded because it focuses on the humans and the wizards, and then allows you to be present for the birth, as it were, of the group that will come to be known as the Horde. Best of all, the film culminates in Karazhan and the murder of Medivh, poetic justice for an epic finale. I mean sure you can go to the very beginning and focus on the War of the Ancients, but you need to introduce Night Elves in these films first, otherwise the audience will have no idea who these purple people are and why we should care about them. It's more prequel material than anything else. Now for a first film, the Medivh route is the absolute best one you can take. Depending on how well this template film does, only then could we talk about future lore possibilities and whether or not they'd work in a screenplay. And now a comment from Am I Cool Yet? I think it'll have to be spread out over several long movies to tell the whole story. Much like Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, or hell, even the original Star Wars movies. Granted, there are only three of those, but still. There's way too much story to be had to have in it in one movie. Granted, they'll only focus on one or two stories out of the quadrillions that they've made, but still. Even Thrall's story would take a few movies to tell, in my opinion. So let's touch on splitting movies and their desired length. In order for a film to do well at your local cinema, right? It has to divide its gross profit with costs like advertising, employee wages, film posters, paperboard film figures, trailers, television and newspaper promotion rights, actor and director interview flights and fees. In saying that, producers, the people who are funding your project, want 100% certainty, no, 110% certainty, that it will make a bajillion dollars for them. Warcraft as a brand can only take them so far so they might hire Brad Pitt as an actor to boost film recognition, or they'll focus on a popular character like Wolverine, the only X-Men character to get standalone films. So while it'd be nice to, say, split the first war into three movies like Peter Jackson did with The Hobbit, I can guarantee Duncan Jones' producers are breathing down his neck to put in as much recognizable races as possible, to hire the world's biggest actors, Sean Connery as Khadgar, Christian Bale as Medivh, Hugh Jackman as Anduin Lothar, and make it all into one movie like X-Men. It's risky making the first ever Warcraft movie part one of a series, but putting too much in one movie will annoy and alienate the audience. Alternatively, you could set the films in a phase like Marvel does. The first war could encompass the fall of Medivh, and a separate film afterwards chronicling the Horde's conqueror of Draenor, Black Hand's assassination by Doomhammer, bickering between the clans and the occupation of Blackrock Mountain. The second war would be the defense of the Alliance, introduction of the Dragonflights and the closing of the Dark Portal, with the third war involving the events of Warcraft 3. Ideally, you'd want as many films as possible, since even though the Hobbit movies are overindulgent, I've never once complained that it was split into three parts. Likewise, the more Warcraft films, the better. And it's just a matter of convincing the producers. And now last comment from It's R3LZ. In the San Diego Comic Con, 
Blizzard have shown an exclusive 30 second trailer to the fans over there. I myself haven't been there, however everyone that saw it said it was amazing. This trailer hasn't been released anywhere else and you cannot find it, however since they showed the trailer at San Diego, I think that we will probably get more information at BlizzCon. Sorry for the terrible English. So if you haven't seen this already, Ian Beckman recreated the teaser on his channel, link below this video. But what you need to understand about that teaser is that it's a proof of concept. Traditionally, when a Hollywood film is in production, the teaser will primarily consist of basic shots, maybe some simple CGI, just to give you an impression. It's made more for the producers than anyone else, and from the way this Warcraft teaser is described, it sounds like they were just experimenting with CGI sky textures and an overall feel of what the movie will become. It's not a real teaser, just something Duncan Jones threw together in his spare time waiting for Charles to finish a script. What I do think this confirms though, is that they're aiming for a realistic look in their film. Without the traditional Warcraft art style, the movie will be more akin to a Warcraft inspired fantasy than any type of live action representation of WoW as we know it, which I believe to be a good thing. Too much CGI and you end up with the Star Wars prequel trilogy, too little and it'll look like low budget trash. How are the orcs going to look? Will they be like the one you see in the Mr. Pandaria cinematic, or the in-game model, or more realistic to mirror the live action human actors? You can't have Andy Serkis motion capture every green or purple character, but makeup might not be convincing enough. What I'm looking forward to is the first official trailer, because until Bill Westenhofer gets his hands on the visual effects, all we're going to have is human actors and animatronics to base predictions on. And as for more information at BlizzCon, I dearly hope so, as I've blown all my savings to book a round the world flight to be there. And that's it for this week guys, uh, I'm keeping the videos around 15-20 minutes, uh, all future ones, because half an hour is just a little bit too long. But next week's topic, in which you have to leave comments below for a chance to be featured, will be, what is Blizzard's Project Titan? What do you want to see in it? I really want to have your theories. I want to gobble your theories up into my gullet and digest them slowly over the course of the next week. Then I can talk about the remnants. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, but leave comments about Project Titan. What do you want to see in it? What's, what's it going to be? Is it going to revolutionize the universe? I don't know. Anyway, that's it. So, have a good one.